everyone welcome to another video series of expert matters only on isbr's official youtube channel today we have one of the most brilliant entrepreneur with us he's the founder of a company called roar he is also a chief academic officer at rank media so he was awarded the best principal performance award principal of the year award and also highly effective principal for the year award so i would like to introduce and welcome mr karandeep singh thank you so much for joining sir and welcome to the show thank you shruti good afternoon to everyone and thank you for inviting me it's it's a, a really wonderful initiative i must say that you guys have taken to kind of bring in people who have something to share and talk about and i think it's a, it's a wonderful place for people to kind of connect and explore and understand what is happening these days so thank you thank you for having me thank you so much sir so uh, being an entrepreneur we would like to uh, we would like uh, all the younger generation and the current aspiring generation who are trying to become an entrepreneur or launch their own startup someday what was your journey and experience in this entire entrepreneurship and startup was like okay um well, i'm going to try and keep it as coherent and short as possible see uh, my journey was um it didn't depend see one thing one doesn't have to depend on the trends uh, for example in india we got really attracted to the entrepreneur world or the entrepreneur or the social entrepreneur in the last 3 maybe 3 years when the pandemic got worse right before that it was not that big but what happens is um entrepreneurship is nothing but if you if you trickle it down it's nothing but kind of sticking to things a that you genuinely good at and b that you genuinely passionate and you good at so you got a it's a very simple choice um you want to work for yourself and you think that you have the potential and the creativity and the innovation to create something from scratch or do you want to do that for someone else for example you might have the same innovation you might have the same creativity but you're going to be taking a paycheck that means you're creating all of those things which you're really good at for somebody and in return what do you get you get a paycheck so it's a business transaction at the end of the day when we are employees here the only difference is when you want to put on the hat of an entrepreneur or any of the other similar terms you obviously take a risk that saying hang on i think i'm really good at this or maybe i've picked up now 10 years of experience of working in this and i think i can do it better for myself so my journey as an entrepreneur has been quite simple to be honest i was always passionate about doing things which i felt i could do well okay. but then one has to be smart um see uh, the, the term is very relative you, you it doesn't matter that a 17 year old guy cannot be a successful businessman it's not at all that you know the industry says you know what work for 10 years or 15 years then start your own thing it's very relative it is relative why because it what matters is your uh, not just your iq but this is what matters is your eq your emotional intelligence is much more important even if you're a 17 year old and you think you have the bandwidth to launch something by yourself and you have the uh, bandwidth to face the turbulence of being an entrepreneur then by all means go for it i kind of to be honest uh, did the same thing throughout my career i was always working uh, let's say for organizations but i was always within those organizations experimenting and trying to bring new things but what we need to understand is that you can be an innovator or maybe the term that we use entrepreneur to an extent when you work for someone at the end of the day there would be a point where you have to either accept what your um, you know the guy who's paying your salary is saying or you got to not accept yes the only advantage is if you're running something of your own you are the guy but then that's also an internal struggle because you might end up taking steps thinking hang on this is making sense but that if there is nobody else to advise you you might go in a wrong direction so in my journey i always say we stand on the shoulder of giants so i've always made sure that when you want to become an entrepreneur you have mentors in your life throughout right mentors who you might have met when i was a college kid back in oxford when i was doing a masters at oxford university i had great mentors and i never left those mentors even till today and these kind of mentors will keep coming in your life the question is how do we make sure we use their experience and add value now a mentor can be 
a, again, as I said, a 20 year old guy to a 34 year old guy. It's absolutely okay. See, uh, when we talk about the industry today, age is relative. I'll give you a simple example. You asked me about my experience. I took up my first principal job when I was in my late 20s, which was kind of unheard of in this country, especially because in our country, when we sing principal, it's like this 80 year old, you know, seasoned guy behind a desk. And I was in my late 20s. So I even remember sometimes going to government seminars, government school seminars, and they would get confused who's the principal and I would put my hand up and then, you know, it would take them a while. So it's, and that was a good thing because I started learning the Indian ecosystem and how we think. So when you face genuine challenges of acceptance of, that's the breeding ground for building new things. Okay. I mean, challenges and failures, I would say, are really, really important to making something that you think you can. And of course, as I said, always carry people with you, your mentors or your well wishes. You need to have a good cohort of people who believe that what you've been doing for the last five, 10 years is something genuinely good. You cannot bring, especially when we are in jobs, uh, mostly why we fail in becoming team people is because we have that I factor that I, I, I know better. Right. And now when you're all by yourself and you're launching a company, let's say, and if you have that big I factor, then it's even more dangerous because Nobody is there to tell you that, hang on, this could be done this way. So you got to have the V factor or you got to bring your I down. Mm -hmm. It's very important. So I've always remembered right throughout my 20s, now mid 30s, that you cannot launch any organization if you think you know the best. You always still need to work with people, you know, with, okay. with consultants or with, with mentors or, or people who are investing in your business for that matter. So, yeah. Some of those factors, I hope again, didn't spin a bigger, uh, it's trying to be articulate, but yeah, you know, these are some of those questions that take you on sort of a what will lead. Definitely, yeah. definitely. We ha are going to learn a lot from your experience. So when did you feel you want to become an entrepreneur? What was your point of realization? See, uh, it's a, it, again, uh, the guy, outside my house probably who is running let's say a shop where he's just opened a new shop i'll give you an example a guy who just opened a new general store let's say small general store see technically he's an entrepreneur okay we, we we cannot use the term entrepreneur only for a fancy positions or startups that's right. a startup too right and i saw that guy let's say in five years i convert that small general store into a three-story uh, supermarket so that's success so how did he do that so what I'm trying to say is that I always, I mean, now we have mainstreamed this term entrepreneur, but I always wanted to work for myself because I knew that if I could bring in that creative freedom that I had, right, as a kid also, and I could bring it out into business, I would be more successful than working for someone because what happens is it depends on personality types. See, India, unfortunately, or fortunately for that matter, we come from an uh, a colonial experience of 100 years where the imprint has of master and slave has been embedded into our DNA to an extent. Right. Even now, excellent minds prefer still serving someone. And that's okay. It's not a problem. A lot of people say that, you know what, I, the yes sir mentality, right? And, and a lot of people don't fall in that bracket. That doesn't mean that they're arrogant or, or they're uh, egoistic. They genuinely have more to offer. So it happens to a lot of young professionals when they're working in organizations that they feel like, hang on, I can do more, but they're not given the space to do it. Right. Or probably they're not given the bandwidth or, you know, the, the space or the bandwidth to do it. So then they take a decision that, hang on, let's say you were a, a you know, you were a person who was into performing arts or visual arts or education and you worked in schools or you worked in uh, you know ed tech companies for that matter like similar to my experience and you realize hang on there is a lot more that i can do with this area because a i'm genuinely passionate about it b have picked up quite a bit of experience then you take a call to park yourself and start something by yourself okay. but there are people who would spend their complete life serving and that is okay because it is not their fault See, in our country, serving has been uh, something that has come from generations, our parents to their parents to their parents. Very few people took the risk of uh, going by themselves. And also in the 
earlier times when we were going by ourselves, we were already inheriting the capital to be a businessman, right? right? We have that stereotype in our Bollywood films, right? That the guy's born rich. So now the entrepreneurs who are coming out are not born rich, which is the revolution that I'm talking about. They are, they're, they're becoming decently rich because they have the brains to do it. So um, it does require a bit of boldness, to be honest, uh, if you genuinely want to do your own thing. Uh, but when I say risk, risk, risk should come with skills. You cannot, uh, I mean, I, I, I cannot tomorrow say that, you know what, I'm going to open a SpaceX to like uh, Elon Musk because I love space. I might love space, but I might not know jack about it and I'll fail. So you got to be an entrepreneur or whatever in the field that you genuinely have skill set for. Right. You cannot venture out. Um, you're not thinking that the other guy could do it. Why can't I? But if you don't know anything about it, uh, you're going to fail. Right. So I'm totally with you on this, that India has been having the service, serving mindset throughout generation. But a lot of uh, startups and companies have been opened up recently, in recent years, last five years. I guess there were yeah. maximum startups launched in India. Yeah. So yeah. how is yeah. India developing in terms of startups and entrepreneurship? right now um yeah see it's 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 got its pros and cons to be honest like working with a couple of decent startups in the last two three years what i realized is it's not very different from working for a very big let's say international school i'll give you an example you might be running one of the best curriculums in the country let's say a cambridge curriculum or an ib curriculum which is very international and you know very open but the guy who might own the school or the lady who might own the school might be very ultra religious or very ultra orthodox or ultra conservative. So you might end up running an international curriculum which demands openness and progressiveness, but you might end up running it in a very ultra conservative way. Right. So that mindset. Now, see, most of the uh, ethics that have uh, spawned in our country in the last five years either have gotten really good funding in their inception years or have built a very good strong business model to launch them some of them have really good work cultures but some of them are trying to run a futuristic company with the mindset which is counter to futurism so like that's the problem in my experience i have again seen the similar things people come with good intentions but if you go into a startup you know i'll give an example in a lot of the big ed tech companies the guy who's writing content is never allowed to meet the guy who's writing the script. The guy who's writing the script yeah. is never allowed to meet the guy who's doing production. The guy who's doing production cannot meet the pre-production creative director, cannot meet the post-production because the company does not want knowledge sharing to happen. They don't want collaboration to happen because they want to protect and control the knowledge. So that is very counterproductive when you say that you're, you end up building something which looks amazing, yeah. but your building footsteps have been exactly um, ironically you know, uh, uh, biased or, or, or I wouldn't say the word bias, I would say it, it, it's against what you stand for. Right. So if you are genuinely building e-learning or, you know, startups, then you got to be open to uh, mentally be there because see, mental problem is the biggest problem, not uh, resources, not money, not talent or technology. It's the mindset. Right, right. Definitely, definitely. Mindset should be positive if you're running towards that. So, so everybody yeah. who is watching this video right now is of the age group mostly 20 to 30 years old. So they're at a, a generation where they're looking forward to build up their career. They're at an age group where they're looking forward to make career in a particular domain and they're confused very much. What would be, yeah. uh, what are the things they should start working on right now with your experience if they want to own their startup someday or if they wish to be an entrepreneur someday? Um, see, uh, one thing which I've noticed being confused is actually good because it kind of puts you in a place where you genuinely want to, I, I, I in my mid twenties, starting from early twenties was very confused. I'll give you an example. I, uh, when I finished my master's, I wanted to launch uh, a complete big recording company in India. When I was planning to relocate from the UK to India, I was like, you know what, I'm going to launch a massive recording company, a massive recording studio, which is going to have event management. I'm going to work with all kinds of different artists. I had it all spanned out theoretically. So when I come back to India, I've saved whatever little money of 10, 20 lakhs and all. And when I hit the reality hits, well, that's peanuts when you want to start something. So I this is back in the year 2000. Uh, 11 when I came to India I was 
all mentally ready to start what I wanted to do. But when I saw the physical reality of how much capital, how do you go about it? I realized I'm not yet there. So I took the smart choice right there. I said, hang on, instead of struggling now, running around circles and trying to find investors and all, let me start working in a job. But at the same time, I'm not going to leave my idea. I'm going to park it and I'm going to slowly look how to develop it. So from 2011, now we're in 2021. And that idea, which I had back in college, now I'm launching it in the form of Roar. Because A, I picked up enough pros and cons on what not to do. Uh -huh. B, I ended up building up building more capital, which would be required, brought in people who would want to partner in it. So what, what my advice would be is that being confused is good for us young people. I wouldn't consider myself young because you said I'm not in the young part. I'm not going to take that. But yes, for young people, confusion is good, but confusion without, um, how we say, it? see, dreaming is good, but dreams without goals are just dreams. So the logic is, um, if you genuinely dream about something, that's excellent. If you're confused about something, that means good that you're trying to do something. But if we don't set out a pathway to kind of do it, you might do it tomorrow or you might do it in 10 years. It doesn't matter. If you are genuinely going to do it, then you work on it. You might stay in a full-time job for 10 years, 11 years, but you never left your, uh, you know, let's say dream or, or, or your thing. You, at the same time, when I was telling you in the starting of this conversation, you might still be a 20 year old who has it all figured out. To that person, I would say, you should test the waters right away because uh, I wouldn't want people to procrastinate and be like, you know what, it's not safe. Uh, in entrepreneurship or starting your own business, it's never safe. The same example of a supermarket owner, it's never safe. It could get shut. Maybe the competition is better. Maybe a branded supermarket is better. So an independent supermarket won't work. So if we stop ourselves or procrastinate because of the risk factors, then that, that itself is a risk factor because then we are not doing something we want to do. Right. Having said that, you have to have an equilibrium. So if you are genuinely set mentally, uh, financially, you got the right kind of investors, exposure, and you're ready to do what you want to do, then don't wait. Uh, waiting only might dilute your, uh, you know. But yeah, as in as I said in my case, because at that point when I was in my early twenties, I didn't I didn't realize that the amount of capital I would need was obviously twenty percent of what I need. So obviously you got to build that capital. There also, of course, now we have more options. In my days, again, now I sound like the grandfather that you mentioned. <laughs> You're always but in my heart. <laughs> Yes, but what happened is, see, the interesting part is when I was, if I was going to pitch an idea of uh, performing arts uh, or a music uh, sort of, uh, you know, place, which is also an event management company and is also working with record, you know, different artists, whether it's a chef, whether it's a uh, whatever, director, all kinds of creative fields come under this umbrella of road. If I would have pitched that to an investor in the year 2011-12, I wouldn't have gotten that much of response. Now, it's the investors who are running around, anyone who says, hang on, I got a startup. So they're like, okay, what is it about? I want to invest money. So anything that is digital or e-based or edtech-based, people want to put money because it's kind of those times where they think it will definitely work. Right. The only advice I would give to the 20-year-olds and the 30-year-olds is investment is also uh, something that you got to be careful about. Don't take money from someone who's genuinely not believing in your idea because what happens is the moment we take money, I mean, of an investor, then the pressure on you or your company increases to deliver. A lot of companies fall apart because they're not able to live up to the investor's deadlines. You know, we have a term in ed tech, what we call or in startups called a burnout rate. So burnout rate is quite simple. If I'm an investor, I put X amount of money and I'm expecting a turnover in this much amount of time. If I can't convert that burnout rate, by that time, not only do I lose the investor, I have to pay them back by losing my startup. So such stories have also happened. So you got to be pragmatic about what you're doing and a slightly mental, I would say. Right. Uh, you got to have madness to uh, do something like this. You cannot do it in the comfort of your laptop and be like, it's possible, you know, or you cannot do it in the comfort of uh, you know, or your family members, oh yeah, you know, my uncle-in-law will invest. You, know. you genuinely got to uh, bear it out there and, you know, hit the dirt. 
Right. Uh, it's important. That's the only way you learn. And if you fail, that's a good thing. I always say that if you fail, that means that you're trying. If you don't even try, then you can't fail. True enough, fair enough. I guess you're the first person who's supporting confusion. So a lot of us are at a stage of confusing between things. And I always support confusion because yes. that leads to something productive always. See, uh, all of the people in our age, in the early 20s or even before 20s, we are confused, you know, because I'll give you an example. When I started my career back in England, I used to teach 11th and 12th graders uh, English literature. Okay. Wow. And they were always confused about what do I want to do? Uh, somebody says, you know, I want to do this. I want to do this. Wanna... There are all kinds of things. People who are studying literature. Somebody says, I want to be an author, but there is no money. I want to be a uh, poet, but where's the money? You know. So at the end of the day, it's not very different for people even in Europe or in the UK. Even their parents or their families are expecting some kind of success directive proposal to money is still the mantra of our world, right? So my always the answer was that if you're confused now, it's a good thing. If in the next five years, your confusion leads to something which has now goals, whether you're working on your own project or whether you're working on somebody else's company, but you want to do your thing, that's a good thing. The only problem with confusion is that if you stay confused, you sit in your bed and you say, I'm confused on day one. And that's the same line you repeat after five years. Now that's a problem. Right. So confusion with research, confusion with trying it out is the way. Definitely. People watching this video are going to love you because you're supporting their confusion part of the job. I've always supported kids. You won't believe I used to be hated in every school that I worked, even as a principal, I would always stand by the kids. The kids would say, you know what, we want five days extension on our internal IAS. I would support that. And all of the HODs and everyone were like, no, that is not how it works. I said, no, at the end of the day, that is how it works. If you keep stigmatizing the kids on these so-called deadlines, if you keep pressurizing them, not only are they going to hate you for life, their learning is not going to happen. I mean, they will hurry it up. They will make something up. They will create something to give it to you just to match your deadline. But that's not something they enjoy doing. So the whole process is not going to yield anything positive. And it's going to be short-term retention. So in education, we always aim for long-term retention. But if you're forcing them, they are going to just mug it up, mock it up, maybe give you give them two days, fair enough. They're not going to remember you or the work. So if you want them to genuinely have an exciting journey, you got to honor their time too. I must say you are changing perspective and you are changing the education system for good and definitely for good. Uh, we have almost come to the end of the video. And lastly, I would like you to share one line of motivation for everybody watching this video right now. Uh, right. I, as I was telling you, I always believe in that we should stand on the shoulders of giants. I don't want to quote myself. It sounds a little ridiculous, but I would quote uh, one of the people that I always admired as we all know him. Nancy Mandela once said that, See, there is no joy in playing small. I mean, there is no joy in settling for a life that is less than the one that you know you're capable of. But for that, I want to join this quote with another quote from a guy that, again, I admire is Denzel Washington. So what is Denzel Washington? So why am I admiring these two people? Because that's the beauty of quotes or people. I always say stand on the shoulders of giants, be inspired by people who've done good things. So what would Denzel Washington tell you? He would tell you the same thing that um, if you have, you know, we always are told that have something to fall back on. That means if your degree A didn't work or your job A didn't work, go for B. So he always said that in his career, he never had anything to fall back on. Why? Because he's, if he says, if I want to fall, I would want to fall forward. That way I know what I'm going to hit. So I would be getting up and I'll be ready. So this whole logic of falling back or having options, that's where we start diluting our passion. So with those lines, I hope I've made some sense. To, amazing, uh, amazing. That was wonderful. All right. Thanks for joining in. Thank you so much for giving your time, giving your being so calm and patient for this video. I am sure people are going to love you. Thank you, Shruti. Thank you for having me. And uh, I hope anyone and everyone who does listen, uh, you know, all I want to say is that do what you believe in. Life is genuinely short. 
and uh, there is no point waiting definitely definitely and i must say you are changing lives changing perspective of education system in our india i hope so if if not for anyone at least i can change it for myself i mean if i can do it for myself i think that would also help but yeah thank you thank you thank for you those so much, uh, right? we will definitely see you around thank you so much for your time thank you shruti take care bye bye